Survey CTO is all about forms that people fill out. These might be survey forms, monitoring forms, inspection forms, you name it. But ultimately, you have forms that people are filling out. In this video, I'll introduce you to the basics of creating a new form using Survey CTO. So I've already logged into my Survey CTO server console, and it started me here on the Design tab. I'm just going to go ahead and scroll down to the Your Forms section. I'm going to click Start New to start a new form. Go ahead and give this form a title. I'll just call it my first form. I see that it's defaulting to giving me a unique form ID, my first form. This will remain the same even if I change my form title later. I'm not going to start with a sample form. I'm just going to start with a blank form and show how to get started from scratch. Go ahead, click Next. It says, OK, my new form is ready to edit. So I'm going to go ahead and click Edit Online to edit using the Survey CTO Form Designer. The new form is going to load up in the designer. There's not much exciting here to start with because, again, I didn't start with a sample form, but instead with a blank template. So here I can see that I can add my first field or group. So I'll go ahead and click that. And I'm going to have as my first question, do you want to continue? Now, this is a very standard type of question. We often have informed consent at the beginning of a form. And it probably wouldn't be phrased this way, do you want to continue? But I'm just giving a simple example. Now, for every new field that I add or question that I add to my form, I can choose the type of field that I should use. So a text field would be somebody just filling in a text response. An integer would be a numeric response. Note here that I can click to go into the online help to learn more about any particular field type. Here I'm going to use a select one field type. This is a multiple choice question where the user can, can select just one response. I'm going to choose that, and then I'm going to say I want to configure this field. So for a select one question, I need to choose a choice list. Here I'm going to, it defaults to using yes, no, which is a default choice list. If I look at the choices, I see yes coded as a one internally and no coded as a zero. That's okay for my purposes here. I need to give a short, unique name for this field. This will be what shows up in column headers when I export the data. So I'm going to call this consent. I'm going to say that this field is required. And there are many more options that I can configure for this field, but I'm going to go ahead and just save it because this is enough to just say, this is a yes, no question, I'm naming it consent, and I'm requiring that the user supply an answer. So we can see now that I have this consent field here. The label is, do you want to continue? If I click that, I can expand the details, and I can see that this is a select one question. I can see that the choice list has yes and no coded as one and zero, that it's required. And there's the relevance condition. So this is the conditions under which this field will show, and says that this is always visible. So now I can click to add another field to my survey. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a group. And this group uh, is going to include all of the questions that I'm going to ask for people who do consent to continue. So the label, I'm going to go ahead and say just questions. I'm not going to repeat the questions in this group. I would select this option if I were going to uh, program something like a household roster where the same questions would be asked more than once. I'm going to go ahead and configure. I'm going to name this group consented. And here I am going to click more options. One set of options con concerns when this group of questions will appear. This is relevance. I'm going to go ahead and add relevance, and then I'm going to add with a wizard. So here I'm going to say I only want this to show up when my consent question is equal to yes. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And we see now that a little expression has been created for me. 
This is the expression that if I were to download the Excel version of this form, I would see this uh, expression in the relevance column of the form definition. I could also edit this expression by hand if I was some, an expert, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it. I'm going to save that now. And we see that I now have this group consented. Within this group, I can go ahead and add some fields. So for right now, I'm going to add a field and say, what is your name? I'm going to say that that's a text field. We again configure it. And the name I'm going to give to this field will just be name. And again, I'm going to require it. Go ahead and save that. After that name field, I'm going to ask another question, which is, how old are you? Now here, I'm going to let them enter an integer, a numeric response with no decimals. And I'm going to call this age. I'm also going to require it, but here I'm also going to make use of some additional options. I don't want people to enter crazy ages that I know can't possibly be true. So I'm going to go ahead and add a constraint. This is how I validate the entries that users put into a field. And again, like I did with relevance earlier, I'm going to add with a wizard so that it guides me through the process. So I want a numeric constraint because this is a numeric question. And here I want to set a minimum value of, say, five. I really don't expect anybody under the age of five to be responding to this uh, survey. And a maximum value I'm going to put in at, say, 130. I think that's uh, more than fair. I don't really have any exceptions. If I had uh, some kind of uh, codes that could be entered, so for example, if I allowed negative 888 uh, survey-wide as a refusal or as don't know, then I could add that in here as an exception. But I don't have any exceptions in this simple case. And instead of just giving a generic error message like that response is not valid, I'll go ahead and say, please enter a valid age to continue. And I'll say 5 to 130 in parentheses. So I'll go ahead and save that. And so like with our relevance expression before, we can see that now I have a constraint expression, dot greater than or equal to 5 and dot less than or equal to 130. You don't really need to understand exactly the uh, syntax of these kinds of expressions, but if you are an expert, again, you can go in and edit by hand. So I'm going to go ahead and save that now. And so we see now that I have a consent question, I have a group for all of the questions uh, that will only show up. I can see it'll only show up, it's only relevant if a certain expression is true, which is that somebody said yes to the consent question. And then I have my what is your name and how old are you questions. So that's a very, very simple form, but one that illustrates a couple of key uh, characteristics of many forms where I want to skip some questions in certain cases, and I also want to validate the responses entered in some questions. I'm going to go ahead and select a preview this form right now in my web browser to do some initial testing. This goes ahead and sends the form to the server, processes it, and then here I get to my first question and my first form, which is, do you want to continue? If I say no, that's basically the end of the form because my questions about name and age are set not to ask in that case. But if I say that, yes, I do want to continue, then the next uh, question is, what's your name? I'm going to say my name is Chris. And then it says, how old are you? I'm going to say that I'm three years old. You can see here that my error message, please enter a valid age to continue, 5 to 130, is here. So I'm going to go ahead and say I'm 21. Turn back time a little bit. And that's it for my first form. I'm going to head, go ahead and close the form preview. I'm going to click Save and Deploy to actually save this form, commit it to the server, and deploy it so that I can begin collecting data. I go back over to the design tab of my server console. We can see that my first form is now here in my form list, has a deployed version number, 
This is automatically generated to help me keep track of which uh, versions of the form are, are out there or maybe under development. I could go over now to the Collect tab of my server console, and I could start collecting data. I can collect data on the web, and I can also use the Android app to collect data offline. So that's it for this video. Hope it gives you a very basic uh, understanding of how to create a new form using SurveyCTO. Thanks for joining me.